Not Your Jelly and Hermes. Hermes. Present. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, the humanity. humanity. Oh, the humanity. Welcome back to All the Humanities. I believe this is episode nine, and this week we're doing Edgar Allan Poe. Um, so we skipped a week back there just because I started a job and it was kind of hectic. Um, so we're going to finish off the year or this month, this spooky month with the mummy. Um, so Dracula, unfortunately, will be for next year. But I will have a very special video coming out sometime around Halloween, either a few days before or a few days after. Um, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoy this video. But if they could. Yes. Alright guys. Um, welcome back to all the humanities. Sarah just poured herself a soda. Or pop. I think they say that. Pop. No. Fancy people. Fancy people. Okay, I think we're in. We are in, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Old the Humanities. I'm your co-host, Not Your Jelly, and this is Hermes. your other. Oh, oh your, sorry, your, I cut you off. Your other co-host, Hermes. Hermes, Hermes. Um, this is episode nine, Edgar Allan Poe, and the we're gonna do the Ravens, the Raven, which is his poem, and then one of his poems, one of his famous poems, and then the Cask of Amontillado. Or yeah. Mon a Montia I don't know. It's a famous wine, right? Mm -hmm. And it's from Spain. So you could say it with a Spanish accent. But you could also say it with an English accent. I don't really care. Uh, this one is a... It's a short story. So it's not that long. Um, but it's longer than The Raven. The Raven is hella long though. But we're gonna read it. Or what well, I am. Sarah's gonna eat her salad. <laughs> and... Yeah, okay. Oh, let's get into announcements. Um, so, announcements. I think next week we're going to do Frankenstein. Because mm -hmm. we've both read Frankenstein before. And you've read um, The Raven and the Cask of Amontillado, right? Not The Raven. The Raven. The Cask. Yeah. You never heard The Raven? Never. You probably heard. Our dad, he says it, he like quotes it all the time. Oh, yeah. Whenever we knock on his door, he's like, "Who is napping at? Who is wrapping up my chamber door?" Oh, that's what he means. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. Um. And then, so we're gonna do Frankenstein. Then we're gonna do the Mummy. And then we're gonna do Dracula. Dracula. Yeah. Ding ding ding. I just ate right now, so I might burp. And I'm sorry for that. Him. Don't mind my salad noises. Oh, current reads. What have you read recently? Uh, why don't you go first? Because I'm gonna try and find the title. Because I'm really bad with titles. So I think last week I was talking about how I was reading all these um these Manta comics and these Webtoon comics. The Webtoon comics. Um, I think I haven't started reading them yet, or just read a little bit. I remember I was reading The Witch and the Bull. And it was so good. It was almost as good as Laura Olympus. Because Laura Olympus, I read that and I was like, I was like halfway through and it was like 2 a.m. And I was like, okay, I'll go to bed. Girl, I woke up at 8 a.m. And I was like, I should get dressed and showered and do some work. I, I, I read it until like 11. And then I was finished with it. <laughs> you were like, wow, this is good. Yeah, The Witch and the Bull, though, that one was really good. I read it in like a couple of days. And then I finished it and they were like, okay, next season will be in mm -hmm. a couple of months and i was like no um but i think it started again and i think there's a bunch of episodes now so i'm excited for that i'm gonna read that and then the manta comics most of them i tried reading some other ones they're all right the revenge one with the girl who had cancer that one's okay but <clears throat> it takes forever for the episodes to load because you, you need to go a full day and then it gives you one episode um but the princess of animals that one is good I just like the the art style. It kind of reminds me of Full Metal Alchemist a little bit, but a little bit more whimsy and not as dark. Obviously, to reflect the lighter themes, because Full Metal Alchemist is like it's intense. Um, so yeah, 
if you guys are and that one is on manta comics i would recommend the princess of the animals if you just because I, I think it's cool she can talk <clears throat> to animals and stuff yeah. um okay go ahead sorry like i have something in my throat okay i know me too okay so i have two reads i have a uh, second life of a trash princess and ba- <laughs> i know it sounds bad but like she's trying to pretend to be like a trashy person okay. and i'll tell you a little bit about why so we have a cutscene to the future and or like to present time where she's battling and she's trying not to die like she's in the battlefield and then all of a sudden her feet she's like this dude pops up and she's like that's my fiance and he's um the person who overthrew overthrew the entire kingdom and killed my parent my my dad and my brother i know girl wild and then she sees a lady next to her and all it's over we're done (laughs) it was bad um so this lady's next to her, and she's like, yeah, I made all this happen, and, like, I, she says something about her being an occultist, but it's, like, it's, like, weird. She's a witch. She, yeah, she's, like, a witch. And she has, like, this, this, like, stone or something, or this necklace, and she's like, you know what? I'm gonna sacrifice my life, because this is what the stone does. If you sacrifice mm-hmm. its li- your life, yeah. it gives you a wish. So she kills herself, but she asks Ooh, to go back. The witch or the princess? The princess. Okay. So she kills herself, mm-hmm. and she goes back to when she was, like, 15 years old. In time. Yeah, back in time to stop her fiancé from killing her brother, her dad, and overthrowing the kingdom. Okay, wait a minute. I don't like the ones where they say, I got reincarnated, and then they just go back in time. I'm like, that's not reincarnation. You just that's went back just... in time. <laughs> yeah. You didn't die and start over in a completely different body or like in your body but like honestly your descendant I, I hate it a lot more when they die mm-hmm. and they go into a new body and they know everything that's happened but yeah that i'm fine with that but, but I like get so annoyed yeah it's weird because sometimes they're related and they they're, were romantic before and i'm like that's gross ew no, no. um my problem is calling it reincarnation when, when it's, it's not reincarnation yes that's not reincarnation you just went back in time exactly. stop calling cop calling it that <laughs> okay the second one i, I can't read speak i'm so mad is reincarnation that one is actually reincarnation is, is that it, one good yeah it's really good okay it's called i was reincarnated as a baby fox god but that part <laughs> that's cute it's really cute but also i feel like it, that little last she part literally has nothing to do with the entire story oh what well, like i mean you know she's a baby fox god or whatever but so she's a princess and she lives with her dad and her family. Like her and her dad are really close and she's close with her brother. At least she thinks she is. Until like her and her dad are like in the forest mm-hmm. and her brother you you just see like her brother standing Has over both of them assessment. with a bloody sword and the dad's dead. And then he she's like, I don't know why he's doing this. Like a princess can't even become king or anything like that. And he's like, you know what? I have to kill, like, not even, like, I have to kill you. Like, he's, like, trying to be remorseful about it, but he's, like, I'm, like, I'm gonna kill you. So he slits her throat and makes it look like she killed her dad and then committed suicide. The next time she wakes up, she's in the body of a baby fox god. At least that's what they call him. Mm -hmm. But really, I feel like they're just, like, like, powerful, like, animals that can transform into humans. And she goes, she, she ends up hearing the rumors about how her brother is saying that she killed her dad. Mm-hmm. And people are like, no, that's weird. Like, she would never do that. And now he's king. And the girl who he's about to marry just disses her all the time. Like, she's trash. But she knows exactly who killed the She the knows emperor. what went down. Yeah. yeah, she knows everything. She's like, I see you. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, but, okay, so she's a baby fox god. How does she, like, hang out with the royal family? Like, do they know that gods exist, or is she, like, in disguise no. as, like, a human? No, um, her entire- th- Okay, so there's, like, this whole- There's this whole beastman, or, like, this beast god sort of thing, mm-hmm. and they all have their own tiny, like, little universe where they can all, like, you know, they all have their own little place. And they- th- And the entire humanity thinks that they've all disappeared after mm-hmm. saving them, but really, they just pretend to be human- Oh. Um, yeah. To so, disguise. So her, her dad in the human world is a duke. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's rich. And she's able to, like, kind of hang out with the, the um. royal family a little bit and see rumors. 
And her brother is trying to get him on her side so that he doesn't have to actually put up with, like, with, like, the royals and the nobles. Okay, so is the duke also, like, a, like, a god or something? Yeah, her He's entire family guy. is. Oh, that's cool. I know, right? <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, that was Current Reads. Uh, I think we're, you want to move on? Yeah. We don't have any, anything else to say? Do you have any other Current Reads? Mm, no. Why don't you tell me about your current reads? Because I heard about the witch and the thing in the... I forgot what it was. The witch and the something, but... You said it was good. The witch? Yeah, you said it was like a webtoon or something. Webtoon. Webtoon. I don't know what you're talking about. I think I forgot it. Oh, oh the witch God. and the bull. Yes. Oh, that one's crazy. Okay, so there's two kingdoms. They're at war. There's one full of witches, and there's another one full of regular people. Uh-huh. And so you you're like in the in the like the human one and then there's like the king and then there's like his like first in command his like man at arms or something you're like in he-man man Man at arms Mm -hmm. he's he's like the general military guy he's like the tough one like fights and stuff right um and so basically he accidentally is cursed to turn into a bull it it's a curse that turns you into your zodiac sign Mm -hmm. and he's a taurus so it turns him into a bull and then there's this witch girl you don't know who she is but she's like in disguise she has this friend um and she's like in hiding because the witches there are like treated kind of bad because they're at war with the witching kingdom mm-hmm. um <clears throat> but it makes sense because they use magic to like kill people mm-hmm. uh and they don't know any magic so it's like that's kind of cheating exactly yeah <laughs> so um but yeah so there's these witches or uh, there's this witch and i think they have like a gem on their belly button Hmm. And they're, like, selling them because um, they're taxed more than regular people. So, to make ends meet, they sell their gems. Or I think they sometimes sell, like... Oh, that, that actually might be from something different. No, I think this is also in this one, but also in Suitor Armor. Yeah, there's fairies in that one, and they sell their wings. Which is really sad. Yeah, that is sad. Yeah. But yeah, in this one, too, um, they sell... But I think it's, like, little gems. Or what is it? I forget. Anyways, so, yeah, so the witch ends up helping. She, uh, she turns out she's, like, she was, like, the witch queen's right-hand girl. She helped, like, in a bunch of the war, a bunch of battles. Out? I think she ran away because she was, like, I, I think she was people. raised in the, the palace by the witch or something. And she was, like, this is, why are we doing this, you know? She just gets old enough to be, like, to ask questions and be like, uh-huh, and this is like- dumb. I don't want to be used to, like, fight people and kill people. And so she sends the 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 one that gets cursed into a bull. She sends him, um, she basically, like, shoots an arrow, but it's, like, a special, fancy, magical, celestial arrow. Mm-hmm. And it sends him the plans for their next attack. Mm. Um... Which I think she was like the mastermind, the mastermind beho- behind all of it because she she had enough magical power to like actually pull the spells off. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and it, it it was a turning point in the war, and now like the witch, the witching kingdom is like being pushed back now. Um, but yeah, she doesn't reveal it, and you only learn later on. And he's like, witches are terrible, and he, she's like, whatever. Do you want me to turn you back or not? It's funny. I liked it. I liked it. It could be if they turn it into a show. I was I would hundred percent watch it. They might. I oh feel yeah, like webtoon does to, it now. They're starting to put webtoons into actual shows like I True know. Beauty. Mhm. Have they done? Are they gonna do Lore Olympus? I don't know. But also, it need a lot of CGI, and I don't know if it'd be good. It could just be a cartoon, like uh, or an anime, or whatever. Oh yeah, if it was a cartoon or an anime, I'd be like. Yeah, but they haven't finished it yet, so. I think they had, there was, like, an older version. I was trying to read True Beauty, but, like... Yeah, I kind of fell off of it. Yeah. I was like, it's good, but, like... Yeah. It would update really slowly, and I'd be like, oh, what's going on now? Yeah, you forget. I'm like, who is that? Mm Mm-hmm. And then, especially because it's Korean names, I'm like... Two of the characters look very similar, so I was like, who is this? One would be, like, a total jerk, and the other one would be really nice, and I was like... Who are we talking to? Yeah. Her 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 drawing style is really nice, but yeah, I can't. Yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah. Okay. Um. 
so yeah the witch and the bull i gotta i gotta read that one um all right let's get into it oh my god we've been talking about something that's not what we're supposed to be talking about okay so you want to read the raven I'll read it. I'll read it. You finish your salad. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to be like creepily reading it. You're just going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like. Okay. All right. The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Creepy hands. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh eagerly <laughs> eagerly i wish the morrow vainly i had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow sorrow for the lost lenore for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name lenore lenore is such a dorky name <laughs> lenore <laughs> nameless here forevermore and the silk what it reminds me of a perfume commercial. Sarah, I'm trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. And the silken, sad, uncertain, rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door this is this it is and nothing more presently my soul grew stronger hesitating then no longer sir said i or madam truly your forgiveness i implore but the fact is i was napping and so gently you came rapping and so faintly you came tapping tapping at my chamber door that i scarce was sure i heard you here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, <laughs> wondering, fearing, doubting. <laughs> Stop it! It's so loud, the loudest drink. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams, no mortal ever dared to dream before but the silence was unbroken and the still the stillness gave no token and the only word there spoken was the whispered word lenore then i whispered and an echo murmured back the word lenore merely this and nothing more on to the next page. <laughs> also, can you can you do the the thing where it like changes? Cause like I think that's why you're hearing me so much. Oh yeah, hold on. <laughs> nah, that's cool. <laughs> Back into the chamber, turning all my soul within me burning. Soon again, I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I. Surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance, obeisance, made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. 
Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Thou thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no, no craven. Ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bead or <laughs> bead, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered. Not a feather then he fluttered, Till I scarcely more than muttered, Other friends have flown before, On the morrow he will leave me, As my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken By reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, What it utters is its only stock and store caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore till the dirges of his hope that melancholy bore oh burden bore of never never more but the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore this i sat engaged in guessing but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core this and more i sat divining with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er but whose velvet violet lining with the lamp like gloating o'er she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee. By these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite, and nepenthe, oh, oh, that's my sister, <laughs> respite, respite, and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore, quaff, oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet, still if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether temptest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven nevermore prophet said i thing of evil prophet wait did i say this twice no, no no i didn't okay 
Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a saint and maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels <coughs> name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word. Oh my gosh. There's more. It's so long. <laughs> Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked, upstarting. Hold on, let me change. I thought, I change. thought that was like going to be the end because it keeps it keep saying the raven evermore. And that's it. I'm like, oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy break from out my, oh, take thy beak. <laughs> from out my heart and take thy form from off my door quoth the raven nevermore and the raven never flitting still is sitting still is sitting on the pallid bust of palace just above my chamber door and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor and from my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore. All right, that's it. Dang. That was, that was long. Yeah, it's super long. Also, I didn't really know what was going on. Um, okay, well, basically, like, there's a, the, he hears stuff outside, he hears, uh, something yeah, outside like, of his door and then he hears he goes up there's nothing there and he says lenore and all he hears is an echo then he hears some <clears throat> he hears it some more and then he opens his window he's like oh there's like a bird or something i guess i mean I've, a bird has never knocked on my window but anyways this is like so he opens it and a raven comes in and it just like flies on top of um <clears throat> palace is a uh, athena it's like a bust of athena uh, on top of like his chamber door i guess like above it i feel like that's dangerous maybe just because we have earthquakes here yeah. i would never put something above my my door <laughs> you just walk in and just kunk. Oh. yeah um yeah so it just it's just sitting up there and he's answer he's asking it questions and it keeps saying nevermore basically it's about um um, it's like about death and all that and how like it's coming for you i feel no like that dude is both depressed and lonely yeah he did write it um after his wife died oh, but let sense. me get into it real quick let me just talk to you about his life so edgar Allan poe he was born in boston on january 19th 1809 to two actors who died when he was two he was fostered by a couple john and francis allen so his last name Poe is from his birth parents, and then Alan is from his uh, his foster parents in Richmond, Virginia. The pair were wealthy from the tobacco industry, and gave Alan the best education. He was really smart, did really well, but he dropped out of the University of Virginia oh. due to a gambling problem. Um, he moved to Boston and joined the army, and then when he left, he joined the military academy. But again, dropped out due to money issues. In 1835, he began to write and sell short stories and moved in with his aunt and cousin, Virginia. The next year, he married his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia. Um, okay. Yeah. And for a decade, they would live happily and Poe's career would grow. But then Virginia died um, <clears throat> 11 years after they got married of tuberculosis. 24. Yeah. Um... No, 24. Oh, yeah. And post-depression and alcoholism became more severe. And in two years, he would be found in the streets of Baltimore on October 3rd, 1849, delirious. And he would die four, laters, four days later <clears throat> in the hospital. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. So he wrote The Raven during those two years. His, um, his, his wife was dead. Oh. Yeah. So, and then, I think he wrote another, Annabelle Lee is about him. That's another poem um, about a, 
I'm, I'm pretty sure it's about his, his wife. But, yeah, pretty sad. And it was kind of creepy that she was 13 and they were cousins, but... Do you think he loved her, at least? Yes. Yeah. He, he wrote a lot of poems about her. Hmm. A- Annabelle Lee. That's what the other one. At least he loved her. I mean, it's still, like, weird, but, like... I guess different times, you yeah. know? I don't know. It's kind of gross. Okay. Summary. So, this post, this poem is basically about the oncoming of death and not just physical death, but the eternal <clears throat> death of the soul. So, the narrator believes that he will never see or embrace his lost love, N- Lenore, because he's like, D- will I ever see her again? And the raven says, nevermore. You're never going to see oh, her again. Oh, that's so sad. Um, so... <laughs> Basically, he says he either has either he says lost faith in heaven, although this is unlikely because he states that he adores the God in heaven. I think that's one of the lines. And then, or he believes he deserves to go to hell, hmm. which I mean, um, I don't know a lot about depression, but I think it makes you think badly of yourself. So maybe that that has some truth to it. Um. So, the raven is a symbol of death, um, has come to not really warn him so much, but more taunt him in the lonely time he has left. Man, you that know? raven sounds like a jerk. Yeah. The raven is not nice. <laughs> um, okay, so, themes, symbolism, obviously death, as well as the dangers of grief when you isolate yourself to the point of having delirious visions of talking birds i mean yeah that's a sign you need to probably go out also opening your door to a bird it's a little weird yes i mean like come in homie let's go (laughs) and talk to me all you want okay in myth the raven is a scavenger and protected against human hunters because i think they don't taste good or that might be a crow maybe it's both i didn't even know that yeah i think crow doesn't taste good that's why people don't eat it. That's why we've never eaten it. But there's, like, still I, a lot of them. I don't think I would even try and eat a crow because, like, they carry diseases. Like, like you get, just for, like, having the feathers, mm-hmm. you could get really sick. Yeah, the bird flu, right? Something like that. Mm-hmm. Grandma always told me that. Don't ever touch a feather. I'm like, okay, fine. Okay, so, um, that was the raven. I hope you guys liked me, my reading of it. Um, <laughs> 10 out of 10. I got interrupted. <laughs> you you were just staring at me while I was eating my salad, and I was like, "You were staring at me I eating didn't, a salad." I, I was just like listening to you because like you're talking. No, I I meant I interrupted myself too because I I would mess up. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So next, the short story, the cask of Amon- Amontillado. I'm on, I'm on Tiara, whatever. Um, you finish your salad. Remember, it was good. Good job. Okay, I have a quote for y'all. You ready? Are you ready though? Let's go. Okay. In an instant, he had reached the extremity of the niche, and finding his progress arrested by the rock, stood stupidly bewildered. Why are you taking pictures? <laughs> a moment more, and I had fettered him to the granite. In its surface were two iron staples, distant from each other about two feet horizontally. From one of these depended a short chain, from the other a padlock. Throwing the links about his waist, it was but the work of a few seconds to secure it. He was too much astounded to resist. Withdrawing the key, I stepped back from the recess. That's like a like a hole, not not a break during school. Um, pass your hand, I said, over the wall. You cannot help feeling the nitri. Nitri is, um, some sort of gas. Indeed, it is very damp. Once more, let me implore you to return. To return. No? Then I will positively leave you. But I must first render you all the little attentions in my power. The Amontillado, ejaculated my friend, not yet recovered from his astonishment. True, I replied, the Amontillado. So that's the part where um, he chains him up into the wall. But basically, um, if you want to summary the story, uh, so Machisor hates Fortunato, 
um, because he has wronged him too many times. And then there's one point where he says, like, he, like, crossed the line. Or he, I think he said, he, I think he said that he, he insulted like, betrayed, me. Yeah. Insulted his family name or something like that. It was, like, dumb. I have no idea. It doesn't he say never, that. It just says. He never gets into it, though. He never tells us what happens. And then afterwards, near the end of it, he's like, I regret doing that to my friend. I'm like, dude, you, he's still there. Like, you could just go, <laughs> joke homie and then just like unbrick him i didn't read that oh well i read like like the poem like like i studied it in class it's a short story short story eh, poem yeah, kind of well i just read it right now and it just ends with him like killing him and that's it no he's, he regrets it well, he does yeah. maybe i read like a short version my bad um, I don't know if it's after, like, in the middle of what he's doing it, but he's like, I shouldn't be doing this or something like that. Oh, like, yeah, I yeah. To my friend. Yeah, I think, because he hears him, like, he starts to scream, <clears throat> right? Yeah, it's so bad. I, like, and he gets yeah. scared. He's like, ah! And he's, like, searching for his freaking, I don't know, like, his sword or whatever. And he's, like, sticking out, and he's like, nah. And then he starts screaming back at him. You know what's even sadder? Huh. When he's walking away and he's like, you, he like whimpers. And then that's like the last time he makes a noise. Like he just, he just like whimpers and then he like just, he's yeah. like, I'm defeated, I guess. Like I'm going to die here. Mm -hmm. Which is just so sad. There's one part where he like, where he like, I forget what he does, but he like, <laughs> let me look for it. No, I can't look for it then this crap is gonna stop recording but there's one part where he says like um he's looking inside of it because he doesn't really hear any noises and he's like hello hello because i think he wants to like taunt him <clears throat> yeah and he looks inside with the like the the torch and all it says that he his heart grew sick and he's like oh it's because of the nitrate i'm like your heart doesn't grow sick because of because of gas like your head might or your body might but not your heart. I think he was... He felt bad about it, but he was like... <clears throat> but it was not because I felt sorry for him. But yeah, it, it, what he sees is he only hears, like, the the tinkling of his bells because it's Mardi Gras. Yeah, it's so sad. And I'm like, is he, like, shaking? Is he crying? Because he doesn't hear anything. He just... It's, the bells are just moving. It's, it's like, like, honestly so sad. Like, However much friend. of a butthole somebody is... But it doesn't make sense. I would just watching somebody go through that is awful. How could you? <laughs> the thing is, he, it's Mardi Gras, right? And he, they're both dressed up, and he's like, mm -hmm. like he's like, oh my gosh, you're here! Like that's how you would greet a friend, right? Yeah. Like he's really happy to see his friend. He's drunk though. Yeah, he's. He says like, oh, he he, he greeted me very warmly, which was strange, and it like scared me. But I was like, oh, you're drunk. No, but like. While they're walking, he starts to, like, kind of sober up, you know what I mean? A little bit. I think w when he gets in there and then he starts screaming, he was like, oh, those aren't the cries of a, s of a drunk man. So it's He's like, as soon as he got, like, locked into the chains, he, he, he started speaking very, not in a way a drunk person would. Well, the thing is, was he actually drunk the entire time then? Or was he pretending to be drunk? Uh, no, it I think he was drunk. It's just, like, he got really scared, and I'm guessing the adrenaline sort of, like, woke him up. Sobered him, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, let me get into it. So, um, Montressor hates Fortunato because he, I think he says, like, he added insult to injury. Basically, I looked them up. I looked them up, and one of them is hurting somebody's feelings, and then the other one is more like crossing some, crossing a, like a legal line or like a, like a principle, like breaking a principle that somebody has, you know? Mm hmm So those are two different things, very different, but I don't know. Hold on, let me I look I feel like it. even if they're, they are mean to you, you shouldn't murder them. No, obviously not. That's like... But I'm trying to wonder, what yo. the heck did you do that this man... But anyways, okay, so it says... I found it. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could. 
but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed re revenge. So injury is more like a physical act of doing something. So I don't know, like he, he must have messed with him somehow his life because he says uh, repeatedly, I was happy then, I was, you know, you're well liked, respected, people like you, I'm not like you, nobody would care if I was gone. So he says that, I'm guessing he, he either blames him for what happened to him or Fortunato actually did that stuff to him to like basically ruin his life, which I don't know how much because he does say he has a palazzo and a bunch of servants. So whatever it was, at least he still has the freaking money, right? Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah, so an injury is more like the physical act, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. But insult is like publicly... I'm guessing it's more publicly like mm -hmm. insulting somebody. Because... They don't talk about his wife. Who? Um, Monstre... Or whatever Montreso? Yeah. No, they don't mention a wife. Fortunato has a has a wife, but um, he only says like, "Oh, they'll be missing us." Like Lady Fortunato, she'll be expecting me, you know. And she's like, "Yes, yes, she will." They'll be missing us. Yeah, like towards the end, he sort of he's like, sort of like laughing, and it's very sad. He's like, "Come on, it was like a great joke, but let's go." You know, they're gonna miss us. It's, it's still time to... <laughs> there's still plenty of time. There's, like, a feast going on, like, party and stuff. It's sad, but, um... Yeah. But, yeah, insult is more like... He, like, disrespected him. Mm -hmm. Versus injury is, like... Below, below, like, behind the scenes, like, you messed with me. Like, with my life or something. You get me? So I'm guessing to Montresso, um, reputation and pride is more important to him than anything else. Because he can always act like, oh, my life is fine. Even though it's not. But if you, like, publicly say, like, oh, and you're broke. In front of, like, a bunch of, like, well-respected nobles. They're going to be, like, looking down. You're going to be like, know. what did you just say? Yeah, I'm guessing something like that maybe happened because in the, it, the idea of or like the theme of pride, mm -hmm. it comes up a lot with both of them. Watch when I die, I'm gonna be like Edgar Allan Poe. I need to know what happened. <laughs> He's gonna be like, I don't know. I'm gonna be like, figure it like, out. I I didn't I didn't come up with anything. <laughs> Hurry I up. just left it ambiguous because it's it it keeps you guessing. <laughs> Like, I don't care about guessing. I want okay. facts. Okay, so uh, Montresso takes him to his family catacombs under the lie that he has a, like, a delicious, bomb, expensive flask of a wine called Amontillado. Amontillado is a region, or Amontillado is a region, it's a region in Spain, I think. And that's why they call this um, wine that. They just call it after the region. So... He doesn't know if it's truly a vintage or not because he got it, like, on a discount. And he was like, oh, that's a steal. What if it's, like, real? And it, it's, yeah. So he's, like, um, he's on his way to go ask some dude named Lucchesi. And he's like, oh, I was going to go ask Lucchesi. And he was like, man, Lucchese. Lucchesi doesn't know crap. Lucchese. <laughs> Lucchesi. <laughs> he's like, well, Lucchesi doesn't know crap. I know about wine. And he does say, like, oh, yeah, Lu Fortunato did know about wine he doesn't know about a bunch of other crap but at least he knows this yeah try not to sneeze you good sorry i'm reading my <laughs> um so yeah he takes him down into it deep into it and then there's like this tiny little crypt well it's more like a little area between two like um pillars for these crypts and he chains them to the wall and then he slowly seals it up with bricks and kills him um or we presume that he kills him um, um and he doesn't leave anything in there with him i don't think no and he just chains them to a wall and like bricks it up and then he's crying and it's like oh yeah so themes and symbolism number one is the unreliable narrator now poe really likes this sort of thing um so obviously this man is a crazed murderer so there's that's one point for being an unreliable narrator because he's probably not in touch with reality and he doesn't know how to control his own emotions i mean um if the first thing you hop to after someone insults you is 
let's go kill him. It's a little weird. I know. Yeah, yeah. and the whole time I'm like, he vows revenge. And I'm like, but what I remember do? reading this and I was like, okay, maybe this time, maybe he's just going to mess with him, right? Maybe he won't kill him, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, he's Girl, gonna... I said, this man killed him. And he's here, like, taunting him. Because yeah. you could scare the crap out of somebody and that's messed oh, up. do but... you know his name? Like, Monteros? Montreso. No, Montreso. we only know his last name. His, no, I'm talking about, like, his name name. You know what it really, it, like, if you look at it, it looks like monster. Oh, yeah, that's true. It, it literally, it's translate, it translates into treasure. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, but I'll talk more more about their family right now. Um, so yeah, unreliable narrator. Poe really liked this because um, most of his narrators are crazy and they end up killing somebody, or they're surrounded by a bunch of crazy murderers or just crazy people in general. But they don't connect the obvious red flags and are like, these people are totally sane and I trust them with my life. <laughs> sure. Yeah, like sir. Anyway, so. Carnival is another um, theme going on. This was a day before Lent or Ash Wednesday, aka nowadays I think we call it Fat Tuesday. Yeah. And it was basically a day people went crazy. Nowadays we don't go that crazy. It's not really like a party time or whatever. I'm guessing because it's on like Tuesday. Yeah. But yeah, nowadays people just eat a bunch of junk food or a lot of whatever they want to give up for Lent. I always freaking did that. Um, but back then, they used to have, like, huge parties everywhere, everywhere, and drink and eat, like, a ton of meat, because you, I think you weren't allowed to eat any meat for the entirety of Lent. Nowadays, I think it's only Fridays, but back then, it was, like, throughout the entire time. Um, like, uh, I know you guys have probably heard of Carnival in, in Brazil, um, but during this time, people used to do this everywhere like crazy big fat like people in the streets dressing up you know getting drunk having parties Party. dancing freaking eating crap having feasts all the all the good stuff Sounds you know like a vibe i mean yeah maybe not the drinking part but definitely the food part yeah so this day is basically a day where it was okay to do some bad morally gray things aka a night of buck wildness and tomfoolery um so yeah, I'm guessing to Montreal, this is like, Whoa. it's like a day he can sort of do some, some sort of gray stuff, um, but I'm like murder. Yeah, I'm like, is this the purge, sir? <laughs> Anyways, so another theme is dusk and night. Obviously, bad stuff can happen at night, including murders. Murders. I think that was Bruno. <laughs> yeah, and um. When Montreso and Fortuno, Fortunato meet, it's the, it's uh, right at dusk. So it's like, oop, the sun is going down. It's becoming nighttime. Um, another theme is revenge. Obviously, this is the main theme. It's hinted at a lot, and the main goal of the narrator is to get revenge. Um, that's what he states like at the very, begin very beginning, and um, you don't really know what his plan is until the very end. I mean, you... You presume or you sort of, like, get the gist that he's trying to kill him, but you're like, how are you going to kill him? Like, I had no idea who was going to kill him. I thought he was just going to, like... I thought he was going to mess with him or something. Yeah. This one, I was like... <sighs> Anyways, um, let me see. Yeah, so the narrator mentions how he was once happy. He would not be missed by anyone like Fortunato would be. Uh, so whatever went wrong for Montres Montresor, he probably blames Fortunato for it. We never know what it is, though, or what happens. Again, my, my theories with, like, the injuries and the insults, those are just theories. I have no idea. Um, okay, so the, jumping off of revenge, I have an enemy's weakness. So the narrator states that it is vintage wines. Uh, but I think it is actually their pride in how much they know about win vintage wines. Basically, um, nobles were supposed to know about like fancy expensive things, right? Um, and some other things that they know about is like, or they pretend to know about is like, um, hold on, let me look at it. Let me look, let me look. Um... Is painting and gemery. With gemery is like the study of gems or precious gems, and Fortunato doesn't know crap about it, but he pretends to know. And 
a lot of people were pretending to know about vintage wines just because it made you sound like a a sommelier you know um but he actually does um which might be why he's a little defensive about it because he's like but i actually do know like unlike these other people i do know about wine um so yeah this is his enemy's weakness and he states it but i I honestly think it's more about pride. Again, these are noblemen. And yeah. the whole reason Montresor is killing him is because of his pride. His pride has been... Honestly? Yeah. Uh, Fortunato's... I think his weakness was actually more foolishness. If anything. Oh, yeah. Anything? He's dressed up as a fool. Yeah. Obviously. Well, he's also drunk, though. But even then, it's like... Like, he was still, like, thinking something bad was going to happen. And he was like, no, no. It's my friend. Of course not. Like, he would never do anything bad to me. Like, while they were walking in the catacombs, he was like, are you sure? Like, we should, like, it's here. Mm. It was more like he was actually kind of getting a little bit sober. So he was, like, kind of, like, like, weirded out by his friend. Yeah, but whenever he does that, he says, like, we should go back, you know? I could just talk to Lucchesi. And after he says that, like, oh, I could just talk to this other guy. He's like, no. No, I can do it. Again, like, his pride is his is his fatal flaw. I think that's uh, Mont- Montresor's his weakness, so. I think it's both of theirs. I just think that um, Montresor is smarter. I think Fortunato was just, like, a drunkard. Like, he just, like, liked to drink. I don't know. But then again, it's, like, carnival. This is the one night you're supposed to live it up. You know? Yeah. Like, it would make sense. Yeah. Is this recording? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um. Let me see. Yeah, so he often mentions Lucchesi whenever he wants Fortunato to continue going deeper into the catacombs of his dead relatives. And he also does use wine. He's like, oh, just drink this, you know, this will this will help you with your cough. And then, yeah, Fortunato immediately gets defensive and he's like, no, I can do it. Um, and then also, with revenge, keeping them close. So Manchester also keeps asking, asking him if he's alright and if his cough is, like, not too bad. He keeps m- mentioning the, the nitri, which is, like, some sort of guess. I think it's toxic, not too sure. Uh, basically, he's pretending to be a good friend and sort of a coward. He, like, gets scared. He's like, oh my gosh, look at the nitri. We should go back. And Fortunato is like, don't worry about it, man. It's okay. And I think he does this, to, again, to p- play on his pride, to be like, oh, I'm a coward. And he's like, man, I'm not afraid, you know? Um, and I think it works. But I also think it's partly because he's drunk, too, you know? Yeah. But um, Montresor knows this about Fortunato. He knows that he's prideful. And it also seems like he n- also knows Fortunato enough that he knows he, he like, he'll just stand in a daze when Montresor chains him up like if i was being chained up by somebody i would not i like, would fight I'd be like, i wouldn't ah. be like oh my gosh my friend i'd be like oh, i never up. trusted you anyways but you know and then j- just the fight fact, legit the fact that he's like st- like sitting or standing there just like oh this is happening and then he, he proceeds yeah. to break him up and he's again like, how crazy. drunk is he because he, not only he's drunk when he meets him he's like oh he was drunk because he didn't he doesn't like me but he was like hey oh my gosh you you know so i'm like you're probably kind of drunk you're probably pretty drunk and then as they're going down into the catacombs deeper and deeper no he gives him wine i know but before that the only reason he gave him wine was because he was starting to like kind of sober up a little bit like where he was like this kind of weird i don't really understand um he's acting fishy and you know the the, the wine is, like, kind of rubbing off on him already. I guess because he was walking around or something. Hmm. That's why he gives him more wine, though. And I'm like, shouldn't have da- drank it. I don't know. I don't really get that vibe. But maybe. The whole time he's just sort of like, nah, it's fine. I'm cool. It's all right. I don't think he actually suspects anything. Again, he's foolish. He's like, I oh, this man that whose life why. I jacked up, he's not going to hurt me. I'm powerful and rich and you can't touch me. <sighs> Aren't they both rich? It doesn't make no sense. I don't know. I think so, but I think he's also... He, he, 
having money and then having power sometimes you can get you can get power through money but there are other ways of getting power which is just having people like you and think well of you oh i was i was thinking about being like in the black market or something i was not you weirdo i was like i mean yeah (laughs) okay not that i'm doing any of that anyway so yeah he knows all that i honestly don't think Fortunato like expects it at all i really don't because i don't know if it's because he's dumb or trusting or i think he's weirded out full of himself or drunk I don't think he knows he's going to get end up dead, but I think he, like, is kind of fishy of him. A little bit. I, I don't know if he's fishy or if he's just like, this is boring, I want to go back to the party. You know? I feel like that was more of an, of an excuse. Because he was definitely getting creeped out down in the catacombs. I didn't, I didn't think that. He just asks about his family and he's like, oh, it, it, is this your like crypt and he's like yeah he's like oh my god what's your what's your like coat of arms and stuff and he's like oh it's this and like, what's your family motto and he's like oh that's great and then they start talking about like the masons and stuff and they're like oh it's we're it's this club and we do this when we drink and i don't know the whole time i think they're sort of like because he's i don't know the fact that they're they're having kind of a normal conversation but like he's gonna murder him Kind of weird. Yeah. I think with the Mason thing, because it's a club, and he's like, oh, you're part of it? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, no, you're not. And Bernice is sleeping. He's sleeping on your pillow. Like, yeah. leaning against it with his head. He's so cute. I know. Oh, he's so beautiful. My, my dog likes to lean. He likes to jump on my bed and then put his head on my pillow. <laughs> I think he I think he learned how to put his head on a pillow. I think he just likes it. Maybe it smells like me. You're so adorable. He's so cute, yeah. And then he just tucks his little legs up into his chest. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, anyways, we're almost done. So he struggles for a while and then begins to laugh, saying how great of a joke it is. And then all the while he keeps saying the Amontillado as if Buntress or planned on murdering him, but also he's like, he's gonna share the wine with him. Like, oh yeah, also I brought the wine. I wouldn't lie about the wine. He's like, what? He's like, yeah, bro. The fact that he doesn't believe it, he's like, but the wine. I gotta wash my hands real quick. Okay, I'm almost done. Um, so oh, also let's not forget that Montresor is literally leading him down into a catacomb where there are a bunch of skeletons and dead people. I mean, who keeps their vintage wines with their dead ancestors? I don't think I've ever heard of this being done. I ha- I, I haven't re- read like a crap ton of stuff, but I think I read enough to, to know when like. I don't know. I've just never heard of anybody keeping their wine with, with their dead relatives. I've never heard of that in all my readings. In all my experiences and all the movies i've watched and all the things i've heard i've never heard of this being done so the fact that he doesn't even register this i don't know if they did this during this this time either but i think they didn't i'm pretty sure they didn't that would be really weird especially because of the gases he's talking about but i don't know maybe that gives uh, the wine a different flavor anyways um Oh, and also the whole Montresor's coat of arms being a foot crushing a serpent that's like that that's bitten it, and then his motto being "Nemo me impuno lacessit," or "No one provokes me with impunity." Impunity means like um, I'm never gonna get hurt, or like no matter what I do, there's no consequences. Um, Consequences. Consequences. (laughs) I think Bruno peed on his sweater. I think it was Max. No, it's like right here. Oh. <laughs> it's completely <laughs> The shirt is... <laughs> Take this shirt off of him. <laughs> it's 
smelled bad. That's why I went to wash my hands. Okay, yeah. So the warning sign, the the warning signs, like don't go down into a crypt with somebody who with, doesn't like you. There's like a bones everywhere of dead people. It's I would not a cemetery. Like imagine someone hating me and they're like, I'm gonna take you around the cemetery. Yeah, get out of there. Imagine they could just push you into a hole and be like, I right, time to bury you. Oh, by the way, the the family motto "Nemo me impunity la cecit." Uh, or no one provokes me with impunity. This is historically the motto for the Scottish dynasty, the Stuart dynasty of the Scottish royal family, who ruled for a while. Um, I think they ruled during. I think that's who's Macbeth. Macbeth. Is that who Macbeth is named after? I don't know. I think Shakespeare. He was doing some political stuff because there was like a new king, and he was also king of Scotland before he became king of England. And his family was the Stuart family. So, Macbeth was sort of, um, I think it was, I think it was written to basically please, sort of like please him, you know? But, yeah, so, I don't know what sort of meaning that has. I think it just has like a sort of, actually, I don't know. That's just a fun fact I wanted to share with you guys. Um, oh, and then finally... Uh, Montresor means treasure. People say this is because he's like a genius criminal and has committed the perfect murder. Do I think he's clever? Yes. Do I think he's a genius? No. No. This was nineteenth cen- the nineteenth century. You could get away with a lot. They didn't have cameras. Especially murder. It's so yeah. easy. Call me when you can pull off a murder nowadays and no one even notices. Exactly. Call me that. Anyways, what would someone have to promise you for you to follow them down a dark crypt? For him, it was the cask of Amontillado. What would it be for you? You know those... What would make you be a completely fool? You know those cakes that are vanilla and then they put, like, frosted cream and strawberries in the middle of it? Strawberry shortcake? And, no, 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 no. The one from Phoenix Bakery. Yeah. That cake. And just give me an entire... We could just go to Phoenix milk. Bakery. I know, but, like, um, like if you gave me... they expensive. No, if you gave me, like, a whole bunch of them... Just for me. Just for me. You would follow someone down a dark crypt for that? That cake is good. The a catacombs with, like, gross bones and skeletons. That, that, that cake is really good. If they oh, lied Sarah. to me, if they were, like, if we were walking and they just, like, like, I was like, where's the cake? And they just hand me a slice, I'd be like, all right, let's go. Oh, Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Anything else? No. I'm good. That's terrible. They'd have to know me very well. Okay. Well, for me, I feel like it'd be... Jeez. I don't know. I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Imagine dying in the dark by yourself. Um. I don't know. What would it be? Bruno? Yeah. Be like, I, I have I- your dog. I'd be like... Bet. <laughs> Let's go. I know we both looked at like I, we both looked at him at the same time, and he's just taking a nap. Yeah, I'm he's bur- so pretty. Bernice, he's Every- so cute. Everybody calls him ugly, but like he's so cute. I think they're just making a joke. Our, our dog Bruno. I don't know if you guys have. S- Let me describe him for you. Photos. He has floppy ears. He's brown with he has white, and then also he has like a little dark nose, and. His light brown around his eyes. Yeah, he has the softest ears. And then when he was a puppy, he had like a little curl at the end of them. It was so cute. And then he's long, but he also has kind of short legs. And his legs are white, and then his body is brown. And then he has this tail. It looks like a freaking peacock feather. It looks, it, it's like feathered. <laughs> it's so cute. He's so cute. I love him. And then he, his neck is, like, really fluffy. Like, it's just poof. Yeah, his scruff is, like, and it's soft, too. He's soft. He's super soft. He has, like, this, this like, rich brown. He looks like his mom. You know what? After we're done, we're going to send a photo of the of Bruno. He's so cute. Look at him. Um, okay, guys. I think that's enough for today. Uh, we'll see you guys next, next week. week. Saturday. Yeah. I think we're gonna Actually, do. Actually, am I gonna be there? Yeah, I will. Frankenstein. 
Frankenstein. Frankenstein. See you guys next time. Okay, time to send the photo. <laughs> okay. Of Bruno. All right, that is it for this episode. I hope you guys liked my reading of the Raven and then our like summary of the Cask of Amontillado. I know that one wasn't. Um, I sort of missed some plot points, but I did it last minute. I've just been really busy trying to start my job and everything, but I hope you guys liked it.